So the topic we're going to discuss this evening is the idea, the concept of Amir ala Akum. And uh, basically, the, the, the shir that went in English, the topic was called uh, the Shabbos Goy, and basically the ramifications that apply to, to using a Shabbos Goy. Uh, the term is uh, much better when we talk about Amir ala Akum. The, the Shabbos Goy term is full of uh, all sort of pejoratives to, to begin with. But the reality is, I was visiting my, my daughter in Queens, and you, if you go on Main Street, there's actually a store that has on top of it, really for advertisement, like not just inside, it says Shabbos Goy available, amongst the many things that they have. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the vernacular, this is really what they, you know, they have. So, I, I think we have to understand what this is. Now, lest one think that this is really a, a very esoteric topic, I'll give you three or four examples to realize, wow, this is very much Nagea on a, on, a, on a very much on a weekly basis, and it's a very practical issue. So, the classic and the most common, probably, issue is you uh, come home and uh, you uh, realize it's on a Shabbos, and you didn't leave lights on in your living room, and you want to read your, you want to learn, you want to read your, your, uh, your, your whatever it is you want to do. Whatever it is you want to do might, imp might actually have an impact in terms of how the halacha sees it, but nonetheless, the concept is you forgot, and of course your, your, your neighbor John is available, and the question becomes, how, what, where, and how is that going to apply to, to, to be able to? Much more commonly, as we see today, is people go away, and they go away for Shabbos, they, go, they have to be away for Shabbos, they go away for Shabbos, and they're in a, re they're in a hotel, and then the questions become, what are the sort of uh, ramifications of what that means in terms of you know, uh, asking for help on, on Shabbos? So this is really a question which is very nogei halacha. So let's start at the very beginning with basically what I'd like to do. I'd like to walk through the shear in the sense of understanding what type of anisra this is in terms of understanding what level of, what, what are we dealing with to begin with. Really understanding the very, very co basic concept. What are the basic principles involved in Mir La'akum? Understanding the nature of what it is and therefore at what points you have to, what, what, are, the, what are the points that one can um, change, in other words, to be able to, 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 to get around the problem. And the other area is going to be, when is Amir al not Amir al -Akum? In other words, you, you, one is going to be, when is it not Amir al -Akum? And the other one is going to be, when you have Amir al -Akum, what other things can you, we use to do this? If we have time, Amir Tashem, I'd like to conclude with three tshuvas at the end that were written that, that from, from the poskim of, uh, of today, the contemporary poskim, three, just to give a flavor of what it is. Halacha lamaisa, we can't really give. So, uh, you know, in other words, these are the parameters that we're going to talk about. When you see what I mean by the details, you'll realize quickly that, that as soon as you get into what is the health status of an electronic door in a hotel, then basically consult your local, local rub. Because you first have to know what is that issue that you're dealing with, and then you could plug it into the basic, to the principles that we're going to discuss tonight. So hopefully you'll have the principles, and then from there you then can go back and say, oh, what am I dealing with? All right, so let's get started. Like always, is this a deraisa or is this a derabana? Most of the poskim learn that this is a, a, a halacha that is derabana, and uh, but there is that the the, the Beis Yosef, and if you have this, the source sheets, the first sheet that the Beis Yosef discusses, he quotes the Smag, who basically bases on a mechilta that says that perhaps this is even a deraisa. Now, if it is in fact a deraisa, then the entire Amir Akum, as you're going to see, really doesn't even get off the ground. So that's, that's inherent in, in the issue. But remember that this is a, one, this is a single opinion that, that holds like this. We'll see it inside. We'll, we'll go through the sources that I have in front of, in front of us. So this is the source in the Beis Yosef. So the Beis Yosef says like this. Kosav smag, the mitzvah's loisase, simen ayin hey. He says, tanya b'mechilta. The pasuk that we have is kol melacha lo yeyase bohem. That's the pasuk in the Torah. So the mechilta learns as follows. You should not do it, nor shall your friend do it. Nor should a goy also do it for, for uh, should, should he do uh, your malacha. Says the, uh, says the, the Beis Yosef, so in other words, this is a prohibition to, you can't leave a, 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 for, a, for a goy to do a malacha on Shabbos. And then we get into this whole other issue, which we I should have said in the Hakdama that we're not going to discuss tonight, which is basically Avol im Mosa Loiha Yisrael Hamalacha Me Erev Shabbos Mutter. What happens if he gave them the Malacha from Erev Shabbos Mutter? 
this is a whole, really, it would need an entire discussion on its own, which is basically the concept, and I'll just speak it out now, which is that of a schir yom and versus a kablan, and, and a kablan. In other words, you, you take your, 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 your clothing to the dry cleaner and you bring it to him at five minutes to four in, in, in a winter on a Shabbos when Shabbos is ten past four. Can you pick it up from him on Motzei Shabbos? Those are the questions that, that get into that issue of skiriyam and, uh, and, and a kablan, uh, dropping your car off at the mechanic, and, and v'chuleh v'chuleh, all these kinds of questions that we won't be dealing with this evening. Okay, so continues the mechiltu bulvat she'yiyah b'veisoy. Now, once he's doing this, this is if he does it in, in his house, shel goy kashir b'yarnu b'hal b'hilcha Shabbos. Omnam yesh lo mercy, he says, she'yiyah smachta ba'alma. So ultimately, this pasuk of kol melocha lo yaseh bohem, he says it's an asmachta ba'alma. Now, what did we just realize? We said, on one hand, if we're going to say that this is a doraisa, we seem to have dialed it down by saying that what? That it's an asmachta. Because usually, as if you have something which is a doraisa, you have a posse that says, Kom behem. that's what the posse means, it's a doraisa. But he says it can't really be a doraisa. Even the Beis Yosef realizes it can't actually become a base. Uh, why? It has to be only an asmachta. Why? Because he says, She'im haisa min ha-toyro, lo'i hoya chachomi matir la'asoysa afa beisa shel goi. In other words, there's going to be parameters that come up later on. And if it really was a diorisa, then the Chachamim would not have the power to be able to modify that Isser. So even at the most, at the most strict level, what we have is a basically what, what we'll call a diorisa, but it's, based, it's, it's basically an asmachta. Roiv, however, the poskim hold that it is a derabbanan. And that's how we have to understand it. Now, the question is, if it's a derabbanan, simple question. Why? Why did the Rabbanan feel a need to add this, uh, this Isser in the to, 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 to the Halachas of Shabbos? So we'll see three different opinions um, as to why that would be the, what would be the reason for that. The first reason is the Svara of the Rambam. And basically the Rambam is telling us it's nothing more than or nothing less than a Siyag. Just like a lot of the other halachas of Shabbos, read along with me. I mean, think about it. The goy is not mitzvah on Shabbos. There's no reason why the goy should have any problems to be able to do the melachah. He doesn't even until after Shabbos. This is a, this is a takana from the from the rabbanon. Why? Basically, in a nutshell, it's the slippery slope. If you start telling a guy uh, to do this and make this change, and why don't you build it this way, and I want you to change it that way, the next thing you know, you're going to hand him the hammer, and then after that, you're going to say, you don't know what you're doing, I'm going to show you how to do it, and it's the slippery slope. So the Rambam is really a very simple spar to understand. It's a siyok. Comes Rashi, and he's going to tell us in two different places a different a, a, a different svara. The, the the reason of Rashi is she also li Israel loy ma loav di kachov asay li kach. Don't you can't you can't have a guy do this for me. Why? Mishum chavatzecha v'daver davar. The pasuk in Yeshayahu. Some people recite this before the kiddush, right? Daver davar. In other words, the idea is that our talk should be holy. V'daver davar comes this and says, well, you're going to tell the guy what to do, what to build the deck, and how to make it, and when to do it. That's in the, in the Parsha of Daber Davar. Just a small note, I mean, this really ties much more with the Rav spoke about last week in terms of the idea of what, what was, and this is a Pasuk from Navi. Now, are the Navim allowed to bring in a new Torah, a, a, new, a, new, a new Chiddush, right? So the idea of any of these type of, of, of whenever you have a Pasuk, that means that there must be a Halacha somewhere, and then from a Drosh, the Rabbanan said, okay, this is what Daber Dover means. And Daber Dover means many things, uh, ultimately. But we know that the Nevi'im were not Mechadish anything, but so this had to have been built into the, into the, into the Siyagim of the Deoraisa, but the, 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 the Nevi'im found a Pasuk, and we know that that's the, the idea of Daber Dover. So that's the Pshat that's, that's the, the, the in Rashi. There's another, the Gemara brings down in Shabbos, there's another reason why, and this is really an interesting one, because Rashi explains here, the concept is, and it's actually uh, timely, because it's yesterday's Parsha. The, the, yesterday we learned about the idea of making a Shaliach. How do we know that making a Shaliach works? So the Pasuk is Gam Atem. In other words, you could be Kein Tarimu Gam Atem, 
Kain to you can you can give truma gam atem. So too you 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 you, you gam atem. So the chayra, why do I need the word gam? You know, kain to atem. You should be able to do it. Gam atem comes to teach me what le rabbish luchachem. You can even make a shaliach. So what's the problem now? Is that basically when you tell a goy what to do, who's really doing the uh, the iser? You're doing the iser. So the only question that comes up here, and this is where the, the Achroinim, are, uh, the Pnei Yeshua in particular, is very uh, involved in this discussion, and that is, hold on, we understand that Shlichus doesn't work by a goy. So if you're going to tell me, according to Rashi, that the reason is what? That it's because you're making a Shlich and ultimately falls back to you. So, but one second, there's no Shlichus by a goy. So the Pnei Yeshua has a long discussion about that, and he basically comes to the conclusion that in this case here, yes, in fact, normally that's the, that is the normal, the normal approach, but the Shabbos will be the exception. And again, that's, that's where the Pnei Yeshua is. So basically, what we see till now is the basic principle is that this is an Iser Deiraisa. Now, here comes probably the fundamental point of the, of, of the, of the Shir. Most people, I shouldn't say most, some people think that Amira La'akum is basically don't tell the Goy what you want to do. But you can scratch your ear, you can tell him in a remiza, you can tell him in a side thing. That's very fine. We'll come into the details of that aspect. But the fundamental concept is Amira La'akum, and it's not captured in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the phrase Amira La'akum. Amira La'akum encompasses two distinct different ideas. One is telling a goy or conveying to a goy some information. And the second part is having hana from that as well. And you don't see that anywhere in the words amira la'akum. In other words, both ingredients are necessary or required in order to have amira la'akum. One without the other is not what we would say is amira la'akum. So in other words, taking care of the problem of Amira La'akum through a different mechanism, and we're going to get into that, doesn't solve the problem of Hano. You can't have Hano. Now, just to cut to the chase and to see what's like this, the Shmir Shabbos Gil Chosa puts it out for us in black and white, and he says as follows. Shmir Shabbos Gil Chosa, Perik Lamed, he says, Namtina Lamedim ki kaimon shnei Yisurim belechas hanochri b'Shabbos v'yomtiv. There are two distinct Yisurim. Aleph. You cannot tell a goy to do a malach on Shabbos or Yontav for a Jew. Irrespective of whether the goy, the, the Jew is going to have hana, that's one problem. One is Amir Lakum. The second problem is Isr Hano. He, this one here is Bayes. Yashir in Belechas Hanochri Bishabas of Beyonta, Vuhu Kasha, Light Sivol, and Nochri Lasses, Paul Malocho, Zubishabs of Yonta, Vahalayosa, May Atzma, Bishvil Yehudi. What about, and we're going to get into the details in a moment, but what about if, for example, you didn't say a word? I'll give you the example now, and we'll come back to it in, 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 ter- in terms of understanding it. You're sitting in, and this, I, had, I had this uh, very fascinating uh, this case. I, I'm sitting there with my, with my son, and it's Shalash Shudas, and we're outside, and uh, it's getting darker, 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 as the, the evening is progressing. And uh, there was a waitress. I was there for a, for a simcha. So the, wait, the waitress, uh, you know, says, oh, okay, great, I'll turn on the light for you. I had it right away, and I looked with my son, and we crossed eyes, we locked eyes, and we realized we're in trouble at this point. Why? And we'll get to this understanding what it is. We didn't ask her to do a thing, right? We didn't say a word. That still constitutes amira la'aku. Why? Because ultimately you're deriving a hana. You're deriving, so amira la'akum, although that's the term, only has half the story. And as we develop this a little bit more, we're going to realize that you need, you, you have to cover both sides of that equation. So in that scenario, when, uh, when someone walks into the room and turns a light on uh, for you, right? All of a sudden you have to realize, one second, I'm getting a benefit from it. Nobody said anything, you know, what it is. So before you start asking too many questions, we're going to right away separate out the case of anything that happens in the shul, because that has to be taken as a separate, did someone say that? Oh, yeah, you have Ted who takes things in yeah, the shul. Ted. Ted is a separate parsha. He, by the way, he's been ordained and he knows. But but we'll leave Ted. <laughs> Ted is a different parsha. Ted puts the air conditioning too cold. I'm not having hana. Okay, I'm frozen. Yeah, okay. he's enjoying okay. it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. 
We will discuss Ted in your, uh, We will discuss the issue of the context of a shul, but right now I'm talking about private citizen Joe or Yossel at home or wherever they may be. Okay? Your also makes enough to mean whether the guy is getting a nor from himself. Oh, so that's what we're going to talk about first. Thank you. Okay? Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically get in C like this. You know, first of all, before we even get any further, we're going to have to define now what is the definition of Hanno. So the first thing, if, if, I, if you allow me, is to define Hanno. So not to complicate this, but we're going to need to understand that there's three levels of Hanno. Without understanding that, then this whole Hanno becomes like, so what do you mean by Hanno? And again, when you plug this in later on to your, to, your, to your personal question that you want answered, you have to go back and say, what level of Hano am I? So basically, there is what's called a direct Hano, right? Straightforward direct Hano. What's a direct Hano? A direct Hano is you're sitting in the dark. You've turned off by accident or you forgot to turn on the lights and it's Shabbos now and you're in the dark. Turning the light on at this point is a direct Hano. Straightforward, that's what it is. An indirect Hano is essentially something which you will call the equivalent of Siras Hamonea. It's removing the barrier. In other words, let's say, for example, you left your clock on, uh, it, on, 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 uh, on the alarm, and then it's in the morning, and it's now on all the time, right? So now the question is, and you want to go to sleep now. You want to go for your nap in the afternoon. Do you see a difference between the two? So the truth is, if you said no, I, I would say to you, okay, I understand, but we'll try to work on that a little bit. The idea is, is that when, a, when someone, a goy, turns a light on for you, you're getting a direct benefit of the light. When a goy turns the radio off so that it no longer makes noise, your benefit is not that the radio has turned, been turned off. You want to go to sleep. There's a difference between the two. That's an indirect uh, concept. Now that's, yeah, you can nod, but, but that's, that's, there's a big difference in, in terms of how it's seen, and that's where multiple cases are going to come up. For example, if you leave your car lights on, 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 uh, on before Shabbos, and the goy, the, we'll talk about the benefit, just the benefit aspect, before we get to the Amir La'akum, the benefit of that is that whether a goy can turn that light off or not, that is an indirect benefit, okay? That's an indirect benefit. A benefit is for you to gain from the light, from the cold, from the warmth, whatever that's going to be turned on. And the third concept here is, and this is critical, is, is there an additional benefit? In other words, there was already an existing, let's use the example of a light. If there is an existing light already in the room, and the goy comes and he adds light to that room, that is considered an additional benefit. That is a lower level of the, what the person does. So when we understand what Isr Hanna is involved here, right? what is the Hanna aspect, we have to think of it as, is it a direct benefit? We'll see later on which ones, as you can realize, is going to be more problematic. An indirect benefit. And if the, and if the third one is going to be, there was already an existing light. So for example, if let's say, on the case that I told you, without the Amir Lakum where you're sitting, you're sitting Shabbos, um, Shalashudas, the, 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 you're singing Zmiris, it's beautiful, and you realize you didn't leave lights on. The guy turns on a light. You don't have to leave that, that, the, the, the backyard at that moment. But when do you have to leave that backyard? Because that, sorry? When it's going to get dark. When it's going to become pitch black, you're going to have a problem with that. So you can stay along, because as long as there's na other natural light, the addition of that light doesn't, is, not considered, uh, is, is considered only an additional benefit. That would be, that's a different story. So understanding what light has been turned on and what context, needs, that's just on the side of the Isser Hano. Now, that, by the way, is developed, that, that, I, that I told you, is developed inside. We can see the, the examples inside, and uh, you, you'll see them. If you look at the next one um, here, the Shulchan Aruch, right across from the Shmir Shabbos Kilo Chaso. And he says like this. Any Yehudish Yid Likas Aner Bishvil Yisrael, Osir Lakol. So if a Goy turns on a light, a Ner, for, 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 for a Jew, Osir Lakol. It's Osir for everybody. And here's the bigger Kiddush. Afilu Lemi Shaloi Hudlak Bishviloi. Let's say you didn't come, you know, you know, I asked the Goy to turn it on. 
and then find the light is on. You, as a, as a passerby, cannot come in and sit in, in, the, in this room and, you, and benefit from that either. You cannot benefit from that. Then Chiluk is the Gemara. He says the the Mechaber Bazein Bein Kotzav Lois Char or Shaloi Kotzav again. The whole the issue of uh, of Kablonus or Schiris, which I don't want to get into. Why the Hoyil the Hayisrael Nene Memlocha Atzma B'Shabes Oser B'Chol Inyan. So the concept here is. So where does this direct come from? This is called direct, and that's a uh, halach uh, 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 in the in the Mechaber. You're going to ask me now, so where do you see this idea of indirect? So indirect is the, is, is the source for that is going to be the Gemara and Shabbos that basically deals with the following. The Gemara deals there and says, what about the case where a fire breaks out on Shabbos in a community? What, do you tell, what can you tell the Goy, what can you not tell the Goy? So the Gemara tells us, the halach is as follows. The Gemara says, if you have it in front of you there, so the halacha is that actually you only have the toisus there. So um, the, 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 the the Mishnah there says We don't say you don't you can't tell the goy to turn up to extinguish it, but you also don't have to tell him not to. You don't have to tell him not to do something there. So says Rashi there. You don't, you don't tell him to do so. Okay, so that we've already seen that idea. What about the opposite? Must I tell the goy, don't to extinguish the fire? That I don't have to do. Why? Because I don't, we, don't have that, that, we don't have to be able to do that. Comes Toysvist, in which you have in front of you, and it says like this. So Toysvist has a kasha. Toysvist asks the follows. He says, I don't understand. Doesn't there seem to be a difference? So, the, so he answers the question like this. But like dummy, he says in Toysvis, So Toysvis here in Shabbos is saying, what a month over there by the case of the of the of the fire being extinguished, the halacha there is you don't have to tell the guy to to to, to turn off the light. You don't tell him to, not to turn off to turn off the to, 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 to the fire. So the Gemara says over there, so but why is that different with here? What's the case over here? The Hacha Osir Kesha Yisrael, when he wants to over here, we're talking about the Chi Amrinon de Nachri Adati de Nafshi Ka'ovid. So he says, Hani Mili Bikiba Yuchiyotzeboi, She'en Yisrael Nena Bemase Hanachri. In other words, the idea is here, he says, Avol Hacha, but over here, She'guf Yisrael Nena Bemase Shal Nachri, Lo Yamrinon Adati de Nafshi Ka'ovid. So you see that he says here, Tyson, this is the source for this idea of indirect. When I turn off a light, or rather when the goy turns off a light, that's an indirect benefit. So Toysus tells us that that is different, that is completely different than the case where we would have normally thought that Amir al-Akum would apply. Now, the third, um, the third issue here that we have is the idea, no, not yet. Okay, so that's where we are now. So we, we understand that that's the, 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 on the Hano side, we have different levels of benefit. Now we have to tackle the other side, which is what are the levels, what kind of Amira is going to be you know, involved that we're going to want to understand. You know, so the flip side is, what are the permissible forms of Amira that we can have? So Simi mentioned that before, so we're going to get into this a little bit here. So the halacha is as follows. The halacha is, if you have it here in the Shulchan Aruch, um, the next source, Im yesh ner b'bayis v'yisrael, uvo, im yesh ner b'bayis v'yisrael. There is a, 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 a light uh, in the house of a Jew, uvo in a Yehudi v'hidlik ner echod. And he comes along and he adds, five, he adds a, a light to that. So now um, we're going to be discussing the third level of Hano, and then, we're gonna, and then from there we're going to jump into the Amira. What's the halacha? Mutr li hishtamish la oiroi, ba'oid ner rishan do lake. So let's say he comes, you have, you have one light that's on. In those days it was a candle. He comes and he adds a second candle. This is very important. Then you can continue to use the second candle so long as you at least have the first candle. Once that first candle burns out, now then you would, then you would at that point you would have a problem. Comes the Mishnah Brewer and he says, Mutr. 
After he says like this. After the data the data al yedei haner hazeh shehidlik bishvul yisrael nisgadel haor. You may say, well, hold on. Now the light has been increased. Maybe that's that's too much hano. Yoiser afilo hachi muter umai rikish ha yocho mitchilo b'makem hazeh al kaponim lehe onas ktsas leor haner harishon v'lochen shori. There needs to have been some light in order to be able to read or to do whatever you were doing, albeit being strained. And we'll see in a moment why, and this is an important principle. So we're laying down the foundation to say, Hano is a broad, broad part of the Amira La'akum. Now we're going to get into the actual Amira. So what about the Amira? What are the different ways around it? So the classic example now is to basically say, how would we do it? Which is, what about if the guy is doing it for himself? Now, again, what's the scenario? So it has to be that the guy would have some benefit also. So, says the Shulchan Aruch, Let's say the, the, the guy lights it for himself. What's the halacha? So come up with the example that you want, but whatever it is, the guy is doing it for himself. Right? He is, for example, he's sitting down and he turns on the, the light because why? He wants to read the newspaper. Can you go inside now and say, oh, well, I didn't tell him anything, but now I'm going to have the Hanoah problem? Not at all. Because now we have the, we've, taken, we've solved that problem because if the guy is doing it for himself. Now that becomes important. Keep that in mind. For example, and, and, people have, and, and people have spoken out different heterim along the way or ways around it is, and again, whether you accept it or you don't accept it or your rough holds by this or wherever you're going to ask. For example, I know that somebody to was told by a rough the following. When you are in a hotel room, right, and you want to get into the room. So he was told by a rough the following idea. You put in advance, you say to yourself, you're going to need that door open three times over Shabbos. Friday night, Shabbos, when you come home from shul, and, and then before Mincha again. You leave three envelopes on the desk. When you see the goy, you ask the goy to come in, and you explain to the goy there is something there for you, i.e., there is, a, there is a reason why you want to come into this room. This is before Shabbos or, the, or during? Could right. be either one. Now, either, uh, as far as I know, either one shouldn't say that. That would not be, you know, Matkia, one way or the other. So the idea here is that you are now using what principle? You're saying that it's the guy who, who wants to come into this room. You're asking the guy to come in, but you're basically saying, listen, I want you to come into this room because there is something in it for you. They see the envelope there, they take it, we're good. So this is one sock, one, one, one way to get around this particular problem, but based on the principle. Now, I'm going to show you in a minute, I think I'm going to show you in a minute, but if I don't show you in a minute, I will speak out. Um, the question becomes, how much of a benefit does the goy have to make, this, to make this work? So you'll see, for example, here in the Shulchan Aruch, in the next one, Im oimer adam la'avdo imoy so what about the following scenario? I want to go from one house to the other, but there's not enough light. So I tell the guy, by the way, can you come and can you take the light with you and, let, and you'll walk me. So the guy also needs the light. But the reality, says the Shulchan Aruch, that's not going to work. Why not? Because there, says the Shulchan Aruch, We all know that that's not a very good uh, ploy. Why not? Kivin she'iker ha'halicha b'shvil shel Yisrael. The idea here is, for example, the guy you tell him, come with me. Okay, you don't want to trip and break your neck, so you're going to also take a candle or a flashlight, right? But Mimanashah, who's really going where? So says the Shulchan Aruch, that's not going to work well. You've got to basically construct the case. And that's why I said, I, that's not my example. That's an example that someone told me that he heard from a rub. And whether it's true or not, you'll ask, you know, halacha l'maysa. This is hashira, halacha shaloy l'maysa. But that, that would be the idea. Now, let's deal with, without a doubt, the most common misconception in the idea of Amir Lakum. I think that the first the first common, the first most common mis misconception in Amir Laakum is not recognizing that Hana is part of the equation, without a doubt. I think the second one is that Ramiza, which is the hinting thing, is Mutter. 
In other words, if I don't say it to him, but if I just scratch and do all kinds of different things, Ramiza is going to be mutter. Now, the concept that why this came about, again, most of these things have good sources and good valid reasons, and I can understand how about it came, but the, without a doubt, there is the standard notion, oh, okay, you know, uh, lights are not on, I'll go to my guy, Charlie, he knows when I come there and I go <coughs> like this, he knows, he knows what he has to do. So comes Charlie and he takes care of everything and everything is wonderful. Says the Mishnah Brewer as follows. The Mishnah Brewer says, Osir Lirmois, part of the prohibition of Amir La'akum is Osir Lirmois, you cannot give hints. Says the Mishnah Brewer like this, Let's face it, this is also Amira. Lena Yehudi, Kivin Shal Yideh Remiza Asai, because of this Remiza, Oisei B'Shabbos, he's going to do this, his work on Shabbos. V'hu Adin Shal Shalom Yalei B'Shabbos, Eze Dovar, Sheyavin Mitoich Kach Sheyasem Alocha. Like I said, you can't, and, and he actually, I rubbed my tummy, but the, the, the Mishnah Brewer tells you, You can't tell the goy, by the way, I want you to clean your nose, your nostril. Why? He'll understand, oh, you know what, 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 the, what the Jew must mean? The, the stuff the, that's on top of the candle. So if I tell him, clean out your nose, he'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what that means. Got it. Got the code. Got it. Ah, now, here is, here is where I think the misconception comes from. So says the Mishnah Brewer, but you know what? Ah, kishayimer haramiza le'ena Yehudi sheloi beloshin sivoy. You're not allowed to say to the goy that, um, you know, in a remiza, uh, I want you to do something by doing some other action. But what about if you don't, if you remove the element of tzivoy out of this equation? But rather, what do you say? And we've all heard this. This is how we all grew up. Though it's dark. And you walk around, it's dark. It's, I can't see. It's hot, it's hot, it's cold, it's things like that. The question is, is that Ramiza? So of course that's Ramiza. Better question is, yeah. is that Amir Alakum? So this, sorry? It's not a request for anything. It's you're saying you're making a statement. You're making a statement. So now you've re what you've done now you've 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 essentially accomplished what the Mishnah Brewer calls remiza beloy derechtivu. So now the question is, are you in the clear? And we've all heard people. And this is what it is, and I think this is the second misconception, and I think it's based on the first one, which is what? Okay, I'm good. It's cold in here. It's hot in here. It's uh, it's it's uh, I can't. And look, the Mishnah verse says, I can't read, or an air. Now listen to what the Mishnah verse says. Shari, it's mutter. And unfortunately, it got cut off, the most important line. So, if you take this home and you quote me, then you'll, uh, you'll realize. But, the line that's missing from this Mishnah Brura says as follows. The last word is, So what's the question someone should ask already by now? So if it's not Amira... What is it hinting? Okay, so it's hinting. So let's call it it's, it's hinting. It's not Amira. So you got off the Amira hook. What's the question you should be asking now? Hana. So hold on a second. Am I in the clear? Yes or no? Yes. What? No, you didn't say the rap. But where does the Mishnah, the Mishnah Brewer says it's mutter. But that's because I didn't show you the full Mishnah Brewer. The, the full Mishnah Brewer says, it says, no, 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 it doesn't say that at all. It says as follows. And we're not going to make this uh, usur because of Hano. Why not? Comes the punchline. You hear what he said? In other words, what is he saying is the level of the benefit? It's not, it, remember there was three levels of benefit. There's direct benefit, there's indirect benefit, and then there's that benefit that is, you're adding thing from a low level to a high level. So the remise is not going to help you if you are sitting in the dark, Ramiz is going to help you when? When you want a little more light, then you can be soimach on this Ramiz. But 
If you only have what I have here in front here, you'll walk out saying, somewhere in here, the Mishnah Brewer's quote is saying, the Shari, it's mutter. Even, we, even if without Hano. Even if there is even a little bit of Hano, right? The only reason the Mishnah Brewer is worried about is saying that you don't have to worry about the Hano is what kind of Hano? That level where you're just going to be adding a little bit. But if you don't ha if you have the, if you're going to be, if it's a full dark room, you can make monkey remizas all you want, says the Mishnah Brewer. Not, gonna, not to know. It's not going to help you. It's only going to help you if you have some existing light that you have. Okay. So now, at this point, you're wondering, how does this happen then? So, so far, we've basically, essentially, you know, said. So, now, we're going to employ, um, in the next few minutes, we're going to basically talk about what are the mechanisms that Amira Lakum is going to be mutter. So, quick summary, 30 seconds, it's going to be an Isra Durabonon. We have to understand there's two components. There's an Isra which is the Arais, there's a component which is Amira, there's a component that's Hano. Hano has three levels of Hano. Amira, we've seen that there's different kinds of Amira also. There's also Remiza. It doesn't help you if you have still Hano. The only way that it's going to help you is if you have already some existing, whether it be light, and the benefit is not complete, if it's a direct benefit, there is no question, and this has to be a statement that is to be taken, if there is no, if there is Hana, then there, there is going to be a problem for Amira Lakum to work. So how does Amira Lakum work? When can you? So now we're going to learn three or four different exceptions, not exceptions, but ways where Amira Lakum can work, and they're important in terms of understanding this halacha. Okay. So the first one is basically, for the sense of time at the top of the page, it is basically a cholin. When you have a case where you want a mira la'akum, and if you're dealing with a chola, and of course we're dealing with a chola she'en bo sakana. If it's a chola she'en bo sakana, it's not an issue. But if a chola she'en bo sakana, so the halacha is that you would be allowed to do a mira la'akum, so you have to think of it as a mira la'akum for a chola. That would be mutter. Okay, so that's the source on the top of the page. Because of time, I'm going to just run through them because we don't have enough time. But basically, it's a story in the Gemara that's brought down that says that a Maymar colored the eyes, and the question on him was, how could he ask the guy to do it? Answer is, because it's a chola. So, so and really, though, you're saying to an Akum, you're not getting the benefit. You're saying to the Akum, he needs the benefit because he's sick. You don't need both, Alan. I mean, you, you, the problem is you don't, it's, it's, that, it, it's not, remember, it's not that you need both parts, Amira and Hano. It's that uh. either one, you're, you get in trouble, right? It's just either one gets you into trouble. So even if you've solved one problem, but if you haven't solved the other, you still haven't solved that. That's why you need this to be a chola. If it's a chola, then you're, then you're, then that's how you get around it. So basically, amir la'akum b'makam chola, you're good. The next one is without a doubt the, I won't say the controversial one, but this is going to be, I would imagine, what the rabbis have to keep in their back pocket. Because this is what, what basically is, is the, you'll see it and, and I'll explain it like this. The Gemara tells us in, in, in Gittin as follows. A person who buys a land in Surya, not going to get into what Surya is, but basically it's, it, it was conquered by David, it wasn't completely conquered when all of the rest of Eretz Yisrael was conquered, therefore it has the status of, uh, of uh, uh, the Machloikis and the Gemaras, whether it's in Kibush or not. Anyways, the halacha is that you can purchase land on Shabbos. That's the halacha. You can actually write on Shabbos to purchase land to be able to restore Jewish lands back to, to, uh, back to the Jewish people. So the question that was asked was, can you ask a... Um, can, so the question is, can you... Um, on, uh, so the Gemara says, ask a guy to write on this. So the Gemara says, so now what about, hold on, what's the problem? But hold on, we've established already as a shvuz, it's a derabanan. How can you do that in, in the, in the, in the, and, and tell the goy to write, and tell the goy to write the, the, the shtar? So the Gemara answers with the principle, which is what? Yishu v'eretz Yisrael le'gozer barabanan. Now, the mitzvah of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael goes Rabbanon. So basically, there's a fundamental machloikas. We have to understand how to understand the Gemara and the Rishonim deal with this. Is Yishuv Eretz Yisrael the exception, or is Yishuv Eretz Yisrael the prototype? In other words, you know, do we look at Eretz Yisrael, Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, and that's the reason why you can do Amir La'akum, because it's such a fantastic mitzvah and it's over the top, and that's why we allow it? Or do we say, no, it's a mitzvah, period. And because it's a mitzvah, 
and all you have is a amira la'akum on one side, amira la'akum versus a mitzvah, you can then say that the amira la'akum gets trumped by the mitzvah. Derisa. Right. No, you have a shvus. In other words, you're, you're at a level where you're telling the guy thing to do. And now you want him to do something which is going to be a, a malacha gemura, right? And now the question is, does that work? If you learn the Gemara that this is Ksiva, which is writing, it's an Isra Deir Raisa, but it's the exception, it's only because of Yishu Merit Yisrael was so fantastic. But if you learn that it is in fact not, it's the prototype. If it's the prototype, then what do we say? Then you're going to have, then you could say that, that, that anytime you have a Shavuos, you will have it. Now who says that? The Ran quotes the Itur and is brought down in the Mishnah Brura. And the implication of that becomes if you have a Mira La'akum, in the face of a mitzvah as well, now you don't have a problem anymore. Let's see it inside and we'll develop this idea. Says the Ran. The Ran is, you know what, for, for time purposes, because I'm looking at my watch, the, the Ran basically, now we'll, we'll just read inside. The Ran. The Nimza Paskan shall devarin the feast shita zushim atirin amirla nachri afilu be malacha gemura, right? So Lagabi Machshir Mila, be imbonu lahashva shar mitzvah is the machshir mila. If you can make any of the mitzvahs you know equivalent to machshire mila. In other words, this is the question. Can I tell a goy on you forgot your 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 uh, your um, your knife to do the mila on Shabbos? Can I tell a goy to go and and bring me the goy, to bring it to me or something to carry or something like that? Right? Um, if there's no a roof, can I bring him to that? I have on one hand, that's, that's not even a mitzvah, that's machshire, it's even one step before. That's what the Gemara, that's what the Ran is discussing there. So he says, Kedar shehish voice on the Rambam, the Rambam did equate, did equate them. Lefishi tosot, ukomosh nechta besomoch, he says here, Ba'al pakol ha mitzvah natur amiru lenoch, we afilu v'melocha gumura, says like this, v'nira shezeh hu das harav bal ho'itur. Bal ho'itur was one of the Rishonim, shehitir loimar lenochri lahadlik loyes aner l'seudas Shabbos. So coming full circle to our original question, which is, you're there Friday night, and remember I told you it would depend what that light was being used for. If you're going to read the newspaper for, you know, something, so that's, that's one thing. But if you're going to have the Suda Shabbos, now let's see the Shulchan Aruch inside. The Shulchan Aruch says, Hago. So actually, we're only, we're, I shouldn't say the Shulchan Aruch, we're going to look at the, at the, the Ramah. Yesh oimrim de mutra loimer le'ena Yehudi lahadlik loiner le suuda Shabbos, mishum de svira le de mutra la amira le'ena, de mutra la amira le'ena Yehudi, afilu de melocha gemura de mokoim mitzvah. In a, and who does he quote? He quotes the Ran. Soy Perik Re Rabbi Eliezer, the Mila B'Shem Ho'itur. Now, listen to what he says. So, there, so just understand what this means. Everything that we've learned till now was that, yes, you can't do this, you can't do this. But what we're saying now with Amira La'akum is, if you have a Chola, then that would say, okay, so Amira La'akum, B'Shvil Chola, even if it's a Yesh Bosakana, She'ein Bosakana, we will say you're, it's permissible. So that would be the first of the exceptions. The second one of the exceptions is if you understand this etur and you learn the etur, the run, it's the back pocket because now, as long as you can find a mitzvah, right? Do I say it or, bummer, or does it matter? It probably doesn't matter, but the issue is, in other words, the, the mitzvah that you're doing is a mitzvah. What is being done is can be even a diorizer. So, it's it's really right. on the opposite side. Now, what you're doing, as long as it's a, it's a mitzvah, uh, yeah, it has to be something valuable. But on the other side, it has to be a diorizer because I'm going to show you in a few moments that when it comes to the what you're going to break in terms of drabon, and it's a diff, it's going to be a different halacha. Now, shall pize, and this is what what he says here. Says the the, the Rama, shall pize nohagu rabim lahakel bedover. He says, go out and see. This is what people did. On, on this basis, on this base of this etour, the most many people have come out and they practice to be able to do to, to uh, ask a goy to turn on the light of Shabbos for its Suda, Biprat, Bisudas Chastana, Oimila, the Ain Moichebiodam. Says the Ramah, don't protest over them for the for this reason over here. Now, the Yesh Lahachmir, and as we know, the Rasur Amos says, the Yesh Lahachmir, Bumokim Shein Sorok Godo. The Ho Roy Kapoiskim Cholkim Al Svarazu, he says, at the end of the day, most Poiskim don't agree with the Balho Itur. 
However, like I said, it's a back pocket for the Rav, um, who is going to say, this is about now. How, how, uh, how often this is, that I say, uh, that's halacha shemaisa. You ask the rav uh, whether he's going to paskin on 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 what on 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 this on whether he's going to paskin on the basis of this etur to be able to say that if you have a amira laakum in the face of a mitzvah. So imagine the scenario that uh, and I'm sure it's happened to you many 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 times. I know I did it to your parents. Thank you very much it, uh, when they invited us. It's Friday. It's uh, night and you lean back against the uh, light. And the lights go off. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, and, and what do you, you know, at that point, you know, like, so if there's candles on the table. I can't see you. It's romantic. It's romantic, but it also saves you. Because now the candle's on the table, uh, right? I'm light. You're at it. Right. right. So that, that will save you. So now you're, now you're okay. So now we can learn some of these principles. If you had light, you're, you're probably going to notice, what do you say? You're adding light now. So that's fine. I'm adding Until light. Until the candles go up. Until the candles go up. But that, you know, so you have candles. You have light already. You want to have more light. Things like that. If it was completely pitch black, so hold on, let's avail with this. And if it's completely pitch black, so what are you going to do? You're going to call a friend and you're going to say nothing. You're going to give him remiza. You don't even have to say a word. You come to his house and you go, Open the light. Char <laughs> no, don't even say anything. You, you come into the room, he comes in, he knocks, he goes, oh, yeah, you need the light done, right? He, yeah. You don't say a word. Have you solved the problem? Not at all. You have still the problem of what? You have Hanon. No. But if you have something in which you had it, or if let's say you needed it for a chola, then a chola would be mutter. Now comes the eater and says, but if this is a Suda Shabbos, now already we're going to allow it. So whether this actually is a psak that the poskim will actually take today, that you're going to ask the rabbi. I don't need remisa. I can ask them specifically. Open the hundred percent. In other words, yeah, it's a good point. You hear what people say? That, that's a good point. You don't even need remisa. Of course not. It's a mira la'akum. You could tell them straight up because now the mokam mitzvah thing. Now the third example is the one that we have most commonly, which is if you are dealing with something which in itself is the isra that you're doing is not a diorisa. Till now we talked about turning, well, it's interesting. Turning on a light, where we, we've said, it's a, but turning on a light might be a Durabon. Right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big machloikis. It's a 20th century machloikis. You know, or Bil Yashiv, you Today, it's, it's, it's still right. It's still, it's still going to be. But okay. But whatever it is. But let's say you, you, we saw writing, uh, you know, the star would be that. Now look at the, the source here. The next one, which is, the, again, the, 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 uh, an important take-home point, which is, Right? Now, let's say, for example, it itself is not an Isser de Araisa. The Isser itself that is being requested is an Isser de Rabbonon. If that is an Isser de Rabbonon, then the question is, that's called what? A Shvus. Okay. Now, and what you have, an Amir Laakum is a Shvus. So what is that called? Shvus de Shvus. Shvus de Shvus. Thanks. So that's a shvus de shvus. Now, when do we say shvus de shvus is mutter? You need, now you need something, you need shvus de shvus v'mokoim mitzvah. Shvus de shvus v'mokoim mitzvah, everybody holds his mutter. So going back to the question, if you can figure out, are you dealing with a deraisa or de rabbonon, it's a huge difference. Because now a mira la'akum suddenly is a shvus. If what you're dealing with is a de rabbonon, so let's make this at the very simple case where you're going into the hotel room and whatever you need in there is for sure going to be the Rabbonan and you need it because you're there for Shabbos because it's going to be ruining your Shabbos. Now you have a shvus to shvus for Mokka Mitzvah. So then as long as you understand, you, it's for the Rav and, and to decide what is considered A, the Mokka Mitzvah and B, what is a Deir Reis and a Deir Rabbonan. But the principle will always be shvus to shvus b'mokim mitzvah is going to be mutter. According to the iter, shvus b'mokim even molacha asura is going to be mutter as well. That's, a, that's an important uh, another, an, an, another important point. So we'll conclude now with three very three three chuvas that were written. Two by Rav Moshe, one by the Minchas Yitzchok. We'll see them inside. Very very common shilas. Very very common. Um, and it basically goes through the sugya that we talked about. You, uh, and tell me if this hasn't happened in, in anybody's home. You come home and you realize, you oh, I forgot to take out the light bulb from the fridge. fridge. Okay, now, what do you do? So, you go to your neighbor. Can you go to your neighbor and just tell them, uh, Fred, I, uh, I need help? By now we know the answer is, that's not going to work. Right? 
That's, that that, that, that l'chayra is not, you, you yourself can't do it. That we would say can't work. But listen to how Rav Moshe learns the sugya, and you'll see what Rav Moshe does with this. He sticks to the principles, but he comes up with a tremendous kiddush along the way. But, but the, we, if you would say, if you just apply basic principles, you'd say, I'm going to ask him with a remisa and things like that. Uh, is it direct? Is it indirect? All the different parameters till you get to that point. Says Rav Moshe the following. Hine. Kiyesh behamekarer shenikra frigider. Or electric. Shenidlak bepchir adelas. Okay, that's the case I said. Um, so he says it like this. Second line. Vadai oser toya. You yourself can't open it up. Now why not? Am I turning on the light? No. That's called what? Absecretion. In other words, that's a If this gets into the discussion of it's a dover shein in a skav, and according to Rab Shimon is mutter. And then he says, now what do you do about the light bulb? So he says, he continues and he says, where am I here? Okay, so that's how he basically says. So he basically comes up with an idea which is a concept that says, ah. Oh, the goy is not mechuyev in the in the in the in the in the, uh, in, the uh, in the idea of the psikreisha. I want to do the next shaila because it has a similar flavor. In other words, it's not being answered because of the principles of Amira la'akum that we've learned, but Ramosha comes up with an idea that allows the uh, allows this case to happen as well. But it's, the principles that we've discussed this evening that's what sticks to the uh, sticks to the core. The next case is basically an air conditioner. Again, very common shilas. So what happens is you, you leave an air conditioner on on Friday. You think it's going to be a hot day, right? And then what happens is it's not. And now the shul is freezing. So now you have the issue. And remember I told you I'd come back to Ted? So a general principle that a lot of the poskim will hold by when it comes to that, that things that happen in a shul fall under the category of tzorkei rabbi. So when you have a shvus of a when you have a shvus in and the rabim, so remember we learned before we said shvus b'makom choy l'sheish pos hakana, or you have a shvus to shvus, shvus b'makom in a rabim is a different shaila. So if this let's if this is a, if this is a shaila of an air conditioner in a shul, you'll see that it's going to be very easy to pass in that. The question is if this was even in your house. Look how Rav Moshe deals with both of them. So Rav Moshe is going to tackle this, and he says. He puts it on one thing. Turn off the electricity because why it got too cold. Hine, next uh, line. Hine, you've got the rabbim here. Even if they're not, they, 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 you have a lot of people, but they don't make up the majority of the davners. He says, even if you're not going to tell me that this is a chole here, oh, she is chashash chole, that maybe there is going to be a chashash chole. You know, but it's uncomfortable to be able to stay. You're allowed to. Why? The Afshad Lake on near near the Turk Sudha Shabas, Min Haroyu Lahach Mir Shaloy Loy Mar Lanak Risha Yad like a kidi Isa Biarachayim. Do you see what Rav Moshe just finished saying? He's not poskening with the Etor. He specifically says, I'm not allowed to. In other words, otherwise you could have just said very much, I'm gonna poskin like the Etor. Paskin like the Etor, you could turn it on. Why? Because I have nothing greater than I, I this is this is a classic case of what? Of a mitzvah. But Ramosha says, I don't use that. So you see that the Poskim do not rely on this etur on a halachic basis. Mitzvah? I'm sorry? What is the mitzvah? So in the here, this was in shul. Air it was in shul. Yeah. So to, just to make it more comfortable for people, that constitutes a mitzvah. They're in shul and they're not going to be able to stay. What he's saying is you're not going to be able to stay. You won't be able to, st- to be able to think. You're not going to be able to daven properly. So now you have this thing. He's saying, and I'm not going to rely on, on, the, on this etor. He says very clearly, I'm not relying on this. So he comes up with a difference. So that's another principle to walk away with. Ted walks around with this blanket of, 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 of uh, immunity that somehow or other, you know, no one else has. That's, that's the understanding of it. I mean, you know, exactly the, 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 the called mitzvah the rabbin. Now he also, just for time, I'm going to say, what about if this happens in your house? So you don't have to, you don't have the heter of the rabbin. Says Rav Moshe, there is a principle that is called what? People are chole when it comes to cold. 
That's a general principle. So therefore, you're now a cholda. So you can turn off the air conditioner even at home. Okay? The last shayla, the minchas yitzchak. What about to turn on the air conditioner? I'm sorry? What about to turn on the air conditioner? Oh, so to turn, I mean, he doesn't discuss it, but I'd have to surmise. Like, I mean, to turn on. The, same thing. the other way around. Do the same thing, go on the same way. So the question is, would it be the same way? The only difference is, like this, you don't have that. There's no such principle of, which is which is the opposite of the hakol, cholim, eitzel, hacham. Right. You don't have that principle. Right. So in your house, I don't think that you, I, I, would, I would say that in your house, you would have a problem. In the shul, because of the Tzorchei Rabin, I would think, based on my understanding of how Rav Moshe works, I would say, yes, I think that in a shul they would be able to turn on the air conditioner. In your house, telling the guy to turn on the air conditioner, I'll pee what we just learned? Probably not, because you don't have that spar of the chola. If you're going to rely on the etor, then you have no problem. Or, there's one other way. You have to learn that electricity is... Rabbanon. The Rabbanon. And if the electricity is a Rabbanon, then you have a shvus of Amir al and a shvus, the, uh, the thing, and we're going to close. All right. All right, we'll finish up is over here. Is there a difference between shutting it off or turning it on or changing the temperature setting so, that it will well, be example, working less or more? Or so these are all the questions, like I said. What's preferable? Yeah. What's preferable? So that, 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 remember I started with saying those are the details of that. You ask your rub, the shala, these are the general principles, and hopefully we, uh, we understood that. Okay.